Look at these pictures. Predict the kinds of temperatures for which you would expect each situation. Let us imagine we have a shop which happens to experience equilibrium on a certain day when there are many more people outside the shop than inside the shop. The shop is in equilibrium in that just as many people enter the shop as leave the shop during a certain time. Then the shop announces a sale. This will disturb the equilibrium because now more people will enter than leave. As a result, the number of people in the shop will increase and the number of people outside the shop will decrease. However, as the people in the shop increase in number, that will dissuade people from entering and so will decrease the rate at which people enter. Also, since the shop is more crowded, people will be encouraged to leave and that will increase their exiting rate until the rates of entry and exit will again be equal as was the case right in the beginning before the equilibrium was disturbed. However, in this new equilibrium, although in both cases the first equilibrium and the second equilibrium there is an equilibrium state, in other words the rates of entry and exit equal one another in each of those cases. The number of people in the shop in the two cases are not equal to one another. The number of people outside the shop are not equal to one another in the two cases. The ratio between how many are in and how many out are not the same as one another. Similarly, let's say we have a system involving liquid and vapor water in dynamic equilibrium under certain conditions. And that means that the rate of condensation and evaporation are constant over time. Now we heat the system. That will disturb the equilibrium for a while because now evaporation will increase because there's more energy and so a greater proportion of the liquid particles will now have enough kinetic energy to overcome the intermolecular forces keeping them together in the liquid phase. As a result of this, the number of water vapor molecules will increase and the level of liquid water will decrease. However, as the humidity increases, that will increase the pressure the water vapor molecules exert on the liquid surface, decreasing the rate of evaporation. Also, the higher humidity means that there's a much greater chance of water vapor molecules now colliding with each other and thus forming intermolecular bonds between themselves and so causing condensation. So therefore, condensation rate will increase. Eventually, a new equilibrium will be established at which the forward and reverse, the evaporation and condensation rates equal one another again and so the amounts of water vapor and the amounts of water liquid will stay constant over time. However, this is a new equilibrium. It differs from the first equilibrium in that in the first equilibrium there was a high ratio of liquid water in comparison to gaseous water. And in the second situation, there's a low ratio of liquid compared to gaseous water. In both of the equilibrium situations, however, the rates of forward and reverse reactions are equal to one another. In other words, they are in equilibrium. Here you can see this is a low rate both forward and reverse, but equal forward as reverse. Whereas in the second situation, we have high forward and reverse rates, but equal to one another. What do these three setups have in common? What is different between the three? Which ones are in equilibrium? Which ones lie most to the left and which one most to the right? In all three cases, the rates of forward and reverse reaction are equal to one another. And so they are all in equilibrium. Unless equilibrium is disturbed, the amount of liquid water in each of the situations will not change over time and the amount of water vapor in that particular setup won't either change over time. But the three differ. They differ in the relative amounts of liquid water compared to gaseous water. We can see in the first situation the setup lies to 
the left that means that there's a lot of liquid water at the equilibrium position and the one in the hot situation lies to the right meaning once equilibrium has been reached as shown in the picture there is a lot of gaseous water this terminology is a little misleading because you mustn't think if I say that the cool situation lies to the left I'm not saying that the rate of reaction to the left is greater than the rate of reaction to the right. If that were the case, this would not be an equilibrium. It is an equilibrium. The two rates happen at the same rate. But the point is that once it has reached equilibrium, the reactants which are written on the left-hand side are more abundant than the products which are written on the right. So we say it lies to the left. Being at equilibrium should also not be confused to the process of reaching equilibrium. This table here shows the process of reaching equilibrium over a period of a day. By the end of one day, the system is in equilibrium. And after a week, the system is still in equilibrium. As you can see, the water levels, water liquid levels, are the same after a week as they were at the end of that day. The rates of forward and reverse are equal to one another and unchanged at the end of the day and at the end of the week because we are now in equilibrium whereas before that during the course of the day then it was still reaching equilibrium it hadn't yet reached it draw a graph of the process of a system reaching equilibrium and continue the graph for the time when the system is at equilibrium do this first for a hot system pause the video until you've done this yourself the product in this example is the vapor the reactant is the liquid water just after closing the system we have a lot of liquid but we have little vapor the system is not yet in equilibrium so the rates of forward and reverse reactions are not equal to one another evaporation happens at a high higher rate than condensation. As a result of that, the amount of products increases over time as shown by the positive gradient of the graph and the amount of reactants decreases over time as shown by the negative gradient. And that happens until we reach equilibrium. And once we reach equilibrium, where the two rates, evaporation and condensation, are equal to one another, then the amount of product doesn't change over time as shown by the gradient being zero. The amount of reactants does neither change over time shown by the gradient being zero. How would the graph differ for a cool situation? There'd be some similarities and some differences to the previous one. Pause the video until you've done this yourself. Let's begin discussing the ways in which this graph is similar to the one for the hot situation. In both, the amount of reactants, which is the amount of liquid, starts high and decreases over time until we reach equilibrium, from which point onwards the reactants stay constant. They don't change. Also, in similarity to the previous question we start with few products that is little gaseous water and the amount of water vapor increases over time until we reach equilibrium after which the amount of gas remains constant over time the difference between this graph and the previous one is the relative amounts of product compared to reactants once equilibrium has been reached. In the cold situation, the equilibrium is reached with a lot of liquid water left at the end, at equilibrium. There's a lot of liquid water and little gaseous water. So the ratio between products and reactants is such that there are more reactants than products once equilibrium has been reached. In other words, the equilibrium lies to the left. Each of these graphs shows the process of reaching equilibrium in the sections where the gradients are not zero and the process or the state of being in equilibrium where the gradients of 
products and reactants do not change over time. Now let's compare just the parts of the graph where equilibrium has been reached. And we see that the first graph refers to an equilibrium which lies to the right, meaning that once equilibrium has been reached, there are lots of products relative to reactants. And in the second situation, we have a, an equilibrium which lies to the left, meaning once equilibrium has been reached, there are lots of reactants relative to products.